while this session while this session is going to be on nfts my suspicion is nfts are really just a ploy from the brokers to just create a lot more transactional fees but um i'll i'll now let you uh take it over yeah um okay so i guess the i guess the logical place to start is what are what are nfts what are we looking at here and you know what's what's the uh what's the environment um so i guess kind of stop me or or you know direct if, if there are any other questions that kind of come up so um i guess for those who don't know nfts or the nft market is really uh, at this time focused around the creation of um uh, it kind of takes digital scarcity to the next level so these nfts what we see being um, being shared in the world of collectibles and arts and, and gaming is really about um, digitizing uh, digitizing items that would give uh, discrete ownership to one person. So as opposed to you being able to copy and paste a JPEG or a document or what have you and say, hey, I've got a, I've got this picture as well. Um, these NFTs are captured on the blockchain and then, you know, you have ownership associated with that particular item. Now, as a um, kind of as a microcosm you know, onto itself, I think that right now we're seeing a lot of NFTs really are focused around arts and collectibles. So you've got your things like your, you know, cyberpunks, which are just some pixelated images and people have collecting them because it's popular to collect you know and that's really it, it that's very hype um hype driven you also have nfts now that for instance your um NF, uh, nba top shop uh so that's a massive massive uh market in and of itself and it's geared towards the same collectible uh, same folks that did collectibles as you would with your baseball cards your comic books all of that stuff. So, you know, we've kind of started with, with just these art that don't really have much of a, um, a use case. And now we're kind of starting to transition to collectibles where, you know, there are existing markets for, for people who have, uh, who have and love collectibles. Um, you've got the likes of Marvel coming on board, DC coming on board. Um, uh, basically, anyone who's got a licensing or project is, is looking at an NFT to be able to give digital ownership to their their uh, uh, their base. Yeah. Uh, so the this all really kicked off and the awareness around NFTs was really kicked off by Beeple selling uh, that that photograph or that graphic for 69 million. Yeah. And you know, then I I started really looking at NFTs. I had been looking at it in 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 the form of using NFT uh, sort of data files as a, as a file or a token, um, as a way of passporting. So it could be used to like, as a passport alternative or digital encrypted passport for animals and things like that, because it has that hyper encryption, that uniqueness to it. You can add the metadata about the animal, like the size of the animal, the sex, the mother, the father, all this sort of stuff. But looking at then the art world, I actually do see, cause I didn't really see the value in any of this at all. Like, why mm. would someone do that? And then, okay, collectors, well, collectors will pay, uh, you know, anything really for, for something they find specifically uh, inherently valuable to them. But someone said to me, well, yeah, but in the future, like in the distant future or in the medium term future, you're going to have digital museums and art galleries. And I was like, oh, okay. And then within that, you're going to have, nfts right yeah and it's not even a distant future we're seeing that stuff now so that's a that's the next kind of class of nfts that are starting to show up um and that's you know kind of referred to as, as the metaverse so there are multiple metaverses anything like uh decentralized on mana um there are a few of them out there and they pop up you know they are popping up more and more now the sandbox is another one um you throw a stick and, and something's got a, a new metaverse and 
some of these are much more developed than others, which then they already include um, areas that you can go and play gambling games, you know, casino games. Um, they include art galleries. They're including advertising. Um, and NFTs are all a kind of a, an integral portion of that um, of that microcosm. So it's it's coming and it's and it's coming quickly. It's it's here and starting. Um, I think as far as NFTs goes, or at least the application to the technology, we also forget that there is a and this is one of my things that I'm kind of keeping a keeping an eye on is your house is an NFT in theory. Your house is a unique um, piece of property. Yeah. Your car, in theory, is a unique piece of property. Digital ownership of, let's say, with that house, digital ownership of that of that um, house, provided the laws and regulations are in place to back that up, can be a heck of a lot easier to transfer ownership than dealing with however many you know solicitors who go back and forth for the for you know essentially the sake of. I capture a solicitor captures some information. Uh, the the buyer and seller of solicitors captures another information. We check to make sure everyone has the right information and has the right amount of money, and then we exchange. In theory, that should be really quick, but in practice, we all know how exceptionally painful that is. It's about so, three months, <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. So so NFTs now, at least the application of the technology could potentially allow us to turn that painful transaction into a, uh, a transaction between Element Tim, you know, or me and, and whoever, with the advent of your smart contracts that would drive and capture the, the requirements. Check the requirements are, are there, and then the, the transfer is made instantaneously. So, so a, a friend of mine was buying a house, I think two years ago, and he had to pay for an engineer's report and a surveyor to to look at the house before mm -hmm. he bought it. And there were four other people also paying for the exact same services on the house. And I thought we, we got to he, he's also heavy in crypto. And he was like, you know, we could just use an NFT to have we just we just pay for one engineer's report to be done and, 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 and one surveillance to be done. And then that as a file exists on the NFT metadata as in that little passport before that house. Yeah. And there's, there's like so many, there are so many use cases for NFTs. I mean, immense amount of use cases. And, 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 you know, what we're seeing now is essentially taking that and moving forward, you know, we're creating a much more deflationary environment. If you want to, you know, look at, look at it from a, uh, a macro standpoint is potentially we're, we're now seeing this technology with the ability to replace layers and layers and layers of bureaucracy, of, um, of waste financially, of inefficiencies, et cetera. So what we're seeing now with this game, you know, with the gaming, with the collectibles, this is almost, you know, essentially the proving ground for the technology. You know, for, for those who have have been, you know, trading with um, um, with you, I, I look at this as a breakout pullback long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so we, it's we're, on the way up. Yeah, we're we're in we're in price discovery for a lot of these things. Mm. They're 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 new. They're nascent. The technology is still being tested. We're now seeing NFTs that are providing yield as well. So, you know, for, for holding the NFTs, you either get dropped additional NFTs or you actually get dropped uh, tokens and things of that nature that you can use and um, redeem for cash, redeem for ETH, you know, and then redeem your ETH for cash. We're seeing um, NFTs that are being used in the gaming environment. So your NFTs are, you know, your unique game characters and they add the attributes and you can level up your attributes and then you know, what's different now is that you, I can sell you my game character with all the attributes that I've, I've uh, uh, developed, or I can buy particular game characters or attributes from someone else. So that's and very like, in, the market. Uh, that's really like in that film, Ready Player One. Yes. Where, you know, that assassin and he has all these crazy yeah. guns and bombs and yeah. things. And he has that one mother bomb that the main character then gets. And that's like, that thing is like an NFT basically. It, 
I mean, that's probably the best movie. If, if, for those of you who haven't watched it, go watch Ready Player One. You'll get NFTs. Like this, I mean, this is almost, we're getting much, much closer to that reality than I think people realize. Um, and this stuff is kind of happening in the background while a lot of us are, are still taking a look at traditional markets and even some of the uh, uh, layer one and uh, layer two uh, coins and tokens. Uh, this stuff is moving really, really, really quickly because we are in yeah. price discovery. So about about eight years ago, I was part of a company called Digitary.net. It was subsequently bought out by an uh, Aussie firm. Um, but what we did there, this technology is kind of, it's not really that new. It's just the use, use cases and the utilities of that technology are, are new um, in gaming. Whereas what we were doing in Digitary is we were taking student uh, records like their transcripts their degrees and we would actually effectively make an nft out of like your degree wherever mm. you went to, so you went to um cambridge and you graduated you would have to spend a lot of money getting a paper copy of your of your degree transcript that degree and transcripts and send it to say you wanted to then go to harvard and mm. so that would be like 150 bucks every time you wanted to apply to a different university so add in like you know four universities and you're 600 bucks up there right or down so what we did was on graduation day we would have we would have basically our own uh blockchain if you like and it would and then that would uh, api connect to each of our client universities databases and then on graduation day the university database would push a permission to our system and then you would get an email from our system on graduation day and that's where your nft of your degree and your transcript would be and then you could bing that anywhere in the world for free um so that's kind of that that's been around for about like well actually 10 years yeah but uh, the key reason why we're talking today now is really to look at this new sort of collectible space and, and just what you're doing in terms of minting and creating collectibles and, and these NFTs. So why don't you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. So, um, so I think, so for me, I guess here's, here's my market thesis and how I'm looking at kind of NFTs as a, as an investment vehicle. Um, I'm, I'm looking at it more of kind of like as a, as a venture capitalist type of uh, mindset. A lot of these NFTs will, uh, you have an initial, initial pump, fantastic, loads of excitement, and then they, they do nothing or they go nowhere or they just, you know, die. The ones that do do well, however, do exceptionally well, and it tends to be relatively quick. Um, now, I guess, let me, let me just give an example. So uh, I, I minted a, uh, no, I didn't mint, I purchased a Bears Deluxe NFT. Um, and we can, and you can take a look at the collection on, uh, on OpenSea, OpenSea.io. Now this Bears Deluxe NFT was minted or created on the 3rd of September for uh, not point, uh, not one ETH, right? 0 0.01 ETH. I purchased it on the 30th of September at 0.42 ETH, right? So that's already a pretty considerable gain. Since I've purchased it on the 30th of September, today is what, the, the 8th, right? The floor price, what's the floor price up to? is 3, 3.15 ETH, last I checked. No, three, we're now three. We, we dropped a little, you know, a little bit in the-, in the So, uh, so let's just go over the metrics again. Look, given that <laughs> one ETH is, uh, I mean, what are we trading at Ethereum right now? I don't um, want to say maybe like 3,500 or something like that. Uh, we're trading, uh, yeah, 3,653, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, and the, <laughs> so just, these are the NFT collectibles here, as you can see, I'm sharing the Barry's Deluxe very much in this collectible sense, right? So mm -hmm. what, what are the, what were the metrics there again? So it was minted, oh, what's happened to my, it was minted on, 
There we go. It was minted on the uh, the thirtieth of September at zero point zero one ETH. All right, and this is why I'm really, really, you know, interested in getting in to the minting process before it's it, you know before these things move. A month later, I picked this up at uh, on the thirtieth at point four ETH. All right. And right now we see it's worth three ETH, which is the floor price. And the floor price is typically, uh, not typically, the floor price is what is the minimum, absolute minimum that one of these has sold for recently. Um, so you went from about 36 bucks to nine grand. Yeah. <laughs> In the space of two In the weeks. space of a month. Oh, a month. Yeah, okay. from, from minting, from minting to today, yeah. So where do you see that that value appreciation coming from? So, and, and this is where we're talking about how we're um, going to evaluate or how I'm looking to evaluate these. So these Bears Deluxe are one of the, one of the ones that actually provide some utility. You know, they, they have a solid roadmap. They have a strong community around them. Um, and they, uh, you know, they're offering essentially yield on holding the um, holding the NFTs, so we're starting to, we're starting to see a, a difference between these NFTs just for the sake of art and the NFTs that actually provide some type of utility, and the ones that provide some type of utility are becoming more and more uh, more. There's more and more of them out there, so people are starting to transition to them and say, look, if I'm going to spend you know, a tenth of an ETH, a quarter of an ETH, a half an ETH or whatever on an NFT, I, I want that extra um, uh, uh, comfort of knowing that, look, it's not just a picture, it's not just a piece of art, which is subjective and it's completely dependent on whether, enough, you know, whether or not there's enough hype around to sustain the price. But this thing also can give me an additional benefit. You know, I can use it somewhere, I can gather yield from it. Um, so so let me let me so you right down there we're looking at highly pixelated looks like 8-bit graphic maybe 16-bit graphics of bears where's my utility so the so the utility um for this one in particular is literally holding the coin they have um it, it's also going to be part of a a game a bears deluxe game um the and as part of holding the Bears Deluxe, you will get airdropped additional um, tokens to use in the game, which you can, again, you know, sell on, on open market or sell in, in the uh, in-game environment. So, okay. there's, <clears throat> so for this one in particular, it's got, you know, it's got a use case. And, and I think one of the things that people are, are, are watching out for is whether or not these developers are delivering on their roadmap. Um, so every time you're in, you know, you know, I evaluate a an NFT. I'm taking a look at their roadmap, right? What are you promising, and what have you delivered thus far? Um, oftentimes, these NFTs are being used as income generation in order to deliver against the roadmap. Um, so you know, once that roadmap starts to roll out, the the uh, the value of that NFT then starts to starts to uh, skyrocket. Or, or at least appreciate. May, may, you know, may yeah. Skyrocket is probably a bit... Uh, <laughs> so this something else I've seen along the lines of this um, are, the, are the kind of um, blockchain racehorses. Mm -hmm. so there's a firm in Australia that are minting yep. racehorses and they run, the, run several virtual racetracks. Yep. And there are kind of di four different layers of uh, quality of racehorse. Uh, I think that the best is the Satoshi chain. Mm -hmm. um, and each horse, while they might have different, slightly different graphics, invariably they all kind of look the same, but um, built into the, the file as an NFT is the breeding, like whether it's kind of main chain from, you know, the, 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 the main uh, sort of blockchain uh, or whether it's like a, sort of a layer two uh, token, like layer one being on the main chain, layer two being on a, on a, on a, on a sub chain. Um, so it, that it's, I mean, the price on some of these horses, were, they were up to like 60 grand 
for some yeah. of these horses and they actually <clears throat> the owners actually put these horses into races and they are actually winning real money and it's just wild I, I think especially specifically in that you've also got to keep in mind that not only can you race these horses you can breed these horses and as you're breeding the horses to create more you're spending um, to breed the horses uh, you're burning tokens or burning your winnings however you, you breed the horses and then the horses that that you breed in the second third onward generations they take on some of the attributes of the original horses so you can again create more and race those and some will perform better some will perform worse depending on how you breed so that again yeah. is an in-game in-game you know um, item that has real live you know utility you are able to create more based on what you have which is a which is a cost the uh, the horses with higher um, with better uh, a better quality attribute attributes that run faster win more mm. you know cost more to breed with and their offspring again costs more to to buy because they're more likely to win races um, so like a lot of this is really sort of like you know i think there's a lot of people watching this saying come on guys really virtual horses 16-bit graphic bears you know uh i don't get it i'm you know uh really like but the bottom line is is that there is money being made right now mm -hmm. and hand over fist like the yield on some of these things like the polygon chain you know you were onto something there making 12 and a half percent weekly compound yeah which just blew my mind and then i i actually looked into it and i was like well shit you know yeah there it is <laughs> yeah. and like whereas people are killing themselves to make three four percent a year and they're managing billions now you don't want to adopt the level of risk that goes with uh, polygon when you're managing you know a couple of billion um right. but i think for a lot of the retail space <coughs> there's a lot there yeah in terms of making money and it's actually providing a little bit lower risk than you would get in like the futures market and right. derivatives yep. markets um so so how would so okay i i want to for me right i want to be able to buy the best in class digital horse and then i want to breed it i want to race it i want to make i just where is the money where how do i how do i get into doing this how does one so, get these things <clears throat> so i think first first thing people need to do is uh get themselves a, a DeFi wallet. You know, MetaMask is, is kind of the, the go-to wallet for the Ethereum chain. Now, just to, to give us a, a spin-off for that, we're seeing NFTs pop up on all the layer ones and most of the layer two as well. So there's NFTs on Ethereum, there's NFTs on Solana, there's NFTs on Harmony One, MS, NFTs on Polkadot, Binance Smart Chain, um, we're now starting to see them on Cardano as well. Uh, Polygon has them, Avalanche has them. Um, so, but the 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 main uh, concentration is sitting on the ETH blockchain. You know, the uh, the Ethereum blockchain has more NFTs than most of these. You know, NFTs and traffic from these NFTs and tr a transaction volume than most of these other side side chains and other layer ones combined. So for now. My focus is on Ethereum and um, those ETH, excuse <clears throat> me, those ETH ones. Now, if I really want to go out on the risk curve, I can go ahead and get myself a Phantom wallet and uh, plug into the Solana. And it's they're still even developing something similar to an OpenSea where they have that marketplace so you can buy and sell. But for me, uh, that's a that's a bit much. I'm not there yet. <laughs> um, okay. So. So, so I guess to go back to your question about how, how do you get involved and assuming we're going to kind of stick to the Ethereum blockchain, I, the, easiest, um, the easiest way that I've encountered so far is first and foremost, you need a, um, a, a DeFi wallet. Your MetaMask is typically the go-to one in the industry. They have you know, Wallet Connect and other things of that nature. 
Um, but MetaMask typically works. It is um, really solid. Um, you're not going to get, uh, people worry about hacking or being hacked or being scammed. The, uh, that doesn't come from the technology, it comes from the people. So if, for instance, recently I was taking a look at another mint on um, Wanna Panda. So these are NF Panda NFTs. And within the Discord, there were people trying to um, get you to mint using a slightly different website. So if you were to go to this website, you would think, yeah, I can mint these, these things now ahead of time, what, what have you. But that smart contract took you to a completely different you know, thing. It, it connected with MetaMask. MetaMask does what people tell it to do. Um, so you know, one of the risks is, is you need to make sure that you're actually interacting with the, you know, these, the, the official links for these projects. Yeah. I've seen that <clears> in a couple of instances. Yeah. Where people like just try and mask a URL to like a phony site. Yeah. You spend some crypto there to do some minting or do a transaction. And the next thing, you know, you're out of money. You're gone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, that's, that's something that I think people, people do worry about when they start dipping into the, um, the DeFi realm, because it's really, it's really on you know on you to make sure that you're you're making a kind of a wise choice and there's nobody going to go and you know crawl back your you know claw back your money for you yeah. if if you send it to some to an unsavory actor so um, so yeah. so we got a metamask wallet we got a metamask go wallet a mint something or generate so, create something so i i I like, or I would like to mint, you know, my ideal is to mint these project at that, you know, not point one or 01 or two or 05, whatever uh, minting price, and then hold on. It's very much like getting into your, your trade, <clears throat> excuse me, right at the, you know, the, the, the value area low. <clears throat> um, and then riding that and taking off your, taking off risk as, um, as it appreciates. Ideally, you want to um, you want to go in with you know a decent amount of risk, one or two contracts, you know three or four contracts. That same of, as buying two or three of these NFTs or minting two or three of these NFTs, and then you take off your risk as and when as and when appropriate based on your on your um, price targets. So. Yeah. Um, so just when you're normal trade management sort of stuff, just normal, yeah. normal trade management. Um, so when you mint, when you're evaluating mint, there's quite a few different places to mint and there's quite a few different ways to mint a token. And it really depends on what you're looking at. So um, kind of as an overview, there are, I've come across maybe about four or five different ways uh, to, to deal with these, uh, they call them drops, NFT drops. <clears throat> um, one is a launch on OpenSea. So what they'll do is that the, um, that the project will release all of their NFTs at one time onto OpenSea and say, we've released them all for this price. You guys have at it, whatever you want to bid for, what have you, whatever you want to set as a buy it now kind of marketplace, you can do that. Right, and the prices tend to ratchet up quite quickly in that because it's a very open, open it's market. Up an auction. It's an open right. auction. The trick yeah. is, is that most of these NFTs are at that point. You won't know what you're buying yet. They would not have revealed the NFTs. Um, you would only be buying a a reservation for that NFT, and they then get revealed. Uh, you know, 24 hours or after once the auction is is over. Uh, okay. At which time you'll find out whether or not you have a relatively common NFT, or if you have a rare, super rare, or, or what have you, which then determines the resale price. All right, so that's that's one open option. <clears throat> Another one is um, minting through the uh, th through their website or the the project's website. Now. Now, this is kind of where I've been, I've been focusing because it's, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of the, the less noisy and the more fair way to do it. But you really do have to be on the ball because these mints start and finish in a half an hour, in an hour. Um, 
if you've got a mint going three, four or five days, chances are nobody's really interested in that um, in that token. And it may or may not have very much resale value afterwards. So how do you find where these uh, mintings are taking place or do, do you, is, how, is there a website listing like? So one, one website that I use is called Rarity Tools. So um, Rarity Tools, okay. uh, yeah, just Rarity Tools. And it's, there's actually an upcoming, um, pardon me, an, a, uh, an upcoming um, tab on there, which shows you what, what NFTs are, are going to be minting today, what has minted yesterday, um, what's coming up in the next week. Um, now that's, that's one, you know, that's one way to, to take a look at it. Okay. It's the website rarity tools. Yep. So if you go to upcoming right next, right on the uh, banner there. Okay. So that, so this, this is a list of some of the upcoming NFT sales. Gives you the time, the date, the, the cost. All right. Okay. <clears throat> now, one thing that's really, um, that's really important to note is that getting involved or um, signing up to the Discord uh, communities for, for these is really key because you'll also get some of the, you'll get the announcements, you'll get changes in dot timelines, you'll get um, all the real nitty gritty information. Um, so I recommend getting involved in the, um, in the Discord. Uh, I actually tried to mint those last night. If you scroll back up, those Mechaverse ones, yeah, those, those bad boys. So, so there's, so here's another way that we do, um, that they do minting. So for instance, those Mechaverse um, uh, <clears throat> NFTs, they ran a raffle. So you connected your MetaMask to a, um, you connected your MetaMask to their site and then you registered for the raffle, right? Now, if you notice that the, the minting price is, uh, was uh, 0.2 ETH, right per uh, per Mechaverse. Take a look at the at the link. See what the um, no. Go back to the website and then go back and scroll and go back up and look at the OpenSea link. So that was 0.2 yesterday. The floor price is 5.2 today. Wow. <laughs> so right? okay, I'll slow down here now because. <laughs> So you're looking at these, right? And you mm -hmm. wanna you wanna get one at two ETH, right? Point two ETH. I'm oh, sorry, point two ETH. Yeah. So how do how do you capture how do you get this at two ETH? So this one in particular was a raffle. So what what you had to do is you go to the website. You would then um, connect your wallet, and then yeah. you would register for essentially a raffle ticket. Okay when and you the, would be you'd be assigned and, one of these no no you would then you would because the the demand for some of these is so high i think that discord group has over i don't know twenty thousand people in it and just rising exponentially at the day what they then did is they provided a secondary window to say minting is now open and you can let us know or rather you can try to see whether or not you've you've Oh, I think you've gone mute there. I think you muted your mic. Just seems to have gone off. Uh, you might have muted your your microphone. It looks like you muted your mic. There you go. There we go. I, yeah, my um, I don't know. I don't know what just happened. My computer had a fit. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So. So at the point of um, minting, uh, rather at, at the time in which you can mint, they then reopen the site to say, you go on, reconnect your MetaMask, and then wait to see whether or not you've been allocated the opportunity to mint uh, one of these 88, you know, 8,000 uh, NFTs. Right. All right. If you've been selected, you can then mint, pay your money. If not, you're stuck out in the rain and right. you know hundreds of thousands of of um, probably about 
we'll find out later on how many people actually registered for the tickets. But for now, if you want to buy one of these, you know, before they've been released, so no one knows what, what they have, you can pay 5.8 ETH or however much they're charging for and grab them before they're actually released. Now, so, so yeah. my, my big question is, when I look at these prices on OpenSea, first thing I do is check, okay, it's one thing to list a price, it's another thing to have someone pay that price. Correct. And so are there transactions happening right now at, at, you know, at this floor price? So you see that if you hit the volume traded? Uh, volume traded, yeah. So 13, yeah. well, 13.1 thousand ETH of exchange already, is that right? Yep, and that's just today. <laughs> that is phenomenal. <laughs> that is today. <clears throat> So, that and you can awesome. see the trading history, you know, what people are buying them for right there. It's really, really transparent. That's unbelievable. So, uh, so Parcival, who actually is a character in, uh, that's the main character in Ready Player One, three minutes ago paid five and a half ETH yep. for Mecha 282. Yep. And he can't see Mecha 282 yet. <laughs> This is wild. This is yeah, absolutely he, wild, man. He has no idea whether his mecha is a standard mecha with, you know, relatively common comparatively, or if he's got a, a, an exceptionally rare one. Same thing with all of these people. Because they, this, this thing hasn't, they haven't revealed the artwork yet, you don't know what you're looking at. You don't know what you've got. That's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And so pretty much each one of these projects has a similar sort of sort of ecosystem, if you like, of activity, like the Beaver Craft Club or yeah. like look at stuff that's selling today, like, uh, you know, Pixel Beast, you go to this project, um, you can do the same, connect to your wallet, mm -hmm. have a video about it. Um, and then they should be listing their open open sea somewhere yeah so oftentimes when um before they've minted they they may not actually be able to list on open sea so so you'll see here kind of a um uh really a placeholder so this stuff i would be surprised if you can actually purchase it yet because um, right. they've only got 10 items on there um so yeah, the open sea listings tend to come after or as soon as people are starting to to mint them. <clears throat> One thing to keep in note, is, you know, when you're taking a look and evaluating kind of the size of these projects and whether or not um, there's a lot of uh, uh, activity behind them, is it's not uncommon to go to a Twitter page with however many thousands of followers. But keep in mind that you can buy followers on Twitter. Right, you can buy five, ten thousand followers on Twitter for not a massive amount of money. The the juice, as it were, is in these Discord communities, yeah. and the Discord communities that really, really um, determines how um, how active this community is. It will let you know that, um, right. you know, and 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 that's really going to give you a good. A good indication of whether or not this is this could potentially be a big project. Um, you also have the opportunity to get involved in the Discord community, which gives which can give you early access to some of these um, some of these tokens. So, for instance, some of these NFTs rather. So, for instance, I I stumbled across a little guys and if um, little guys. Uh, um, Discord the other day or a couple of days ago, and I was relatively early in the the project seemed interesting to me, um, and you know just asking just basic questions like well how does this work and blah 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 blah. I've ended up as a as an OG uh, member, uh, but okay. what that but what that means is that I'm I am now allowed to mint an NFT for free, All right? Um, okay. Right. So. So, cool. I mean, for free is relative because I'll obviously still need to pay the gas fees. The gas um, fees on yeah. So I don't have to, to pay that. And the way that this particular project is working is if I mint one of these NFTs, 
all right, whether it's a free one or I then go back into the public sale and mint another one, if I hold that until they release their second generation of NFTs, NFTs, so you've got these little guys and then you've got the uh, apes that they're going to release, I get an ape for free just because I've held on to my original NFT. Now, those who've sold theirs, they actually burn the ticket um, to mint that, that ape. So for every little guy that's sold, you know, there's another, there's another NFT that won't be created. And then they do that another time to create these um, pups, essentially. So if so there's like a inbuilt rarity built into these. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but again, every single project is implementing this technology in a, in a slightly different way. And as many projects as there are, there are different ways to get involved in the minting process, all right? Um, so, you know, you really get the information on, um, on their Discord or on their Twitter, um, uh, their Twitter pages, but you do have to kind of dig through some of the, some of the, the, the dredge. So I've got a really good plan. I'll just, I'll just bing you all of my ETH and Cardano <laughs> and you just call me at Christmas and uh, I'll tell you where to deposit the check. How about that one? Deal. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to get a, a racehorse, actually. I am keen on that idea and actually winning some races and making some money that way. That'd why, be cool. why not? And, and I think that's also a really cool thing about it is because people can actually get NFTs about stuff that they're genuinely interested in, you know, and genuinely have some, some kind of, you know, like, ah, I kind of like this, you know, they're, they're NFTs. I hold one or two NFTs that like, I don't think they're going to, you know, they may not be uh, the most valuable things out there. And especially cause you know, kind of earlier on, I was just experimenting, but I like the way the things look, you know, and I think they're cool and they're kind of fun and funky little pieces of art. And, and now, especially if I'm going to get one essentially for free, ah, well, I'm not going to complain. If you're making 9,000 X on, <laughs> uh, on these things, you keep going. You keep yeah. Going. Yeah. There's also that. There's also that. And as the ecosystem expands and as there are more applications and people use them in different ways, there's, you know, more opportunity to, to for price discovery to really determine how valuable these things are. We're still, I think a lot of people are, are looking at these as, you know, you're in a bubble, right? And I think some of it, there's some aspects are very bubble-esque, but they're also really indicative of something that's in price discovery. We don't know how big or small this is going to be, but the applications of this technology is really profound. I mean, some of the applications that we've just spoken about here is, is game-changing. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've studied like the, uh, a couple of different bubbles, um, from like the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, mm. you know, tulip mania, the one that most people would be aware of. And, you know, I think there was a huge amount of that bubble that was perpetuated by, um, the brokers essentially, yeah. you know, and, this is why I keep kind of coming back to, uh, you know, seeing who's really making the risk free money here. And it's definitely like the exchanges. Um, uh, but there's something more here than, than just that, because, um, it actually, the, the, the exchange fees, if you like, are now on with the, these sort of crypto exchanges are sort of democratized. The gas fees are kind of now distributed rather than centralized to a, a, a core key amount of brokers like Coinbase or uh, Kraken or, you know, whatever. Um, and so that's why the, I, I kind of can't wholly designate this to just being kind of a bubble where the brokers are just making tons of cash and everyone's getting slated. Um, and it's, it's a new world really. Um, yeah. Yeah. And definitely. especially, and, you know, when you're talking about ETH specifically, is that we're now burning ETH fees, like uh, or rather uh, burning ETH every time we we use it. So the underlying protocol is becoming 
arguably deflationary, just deflationary. There are a couple of times last week in which the ETH burn outstripped the ETH issuance. And yeah. as the transaction volume increases on the Ethereum chain, that's only going to you know continue to happen. You know, I think we're down to a because we're we're down as far as the the issuance. I want to say we're maybe a 0.2 percent inflationary um, ETH now with this uh, one five five nine being deployed, where we were I think four or five percent inflationary you know before. So the underlying asset is also appreciating while these nfts are appreciating um so I, I think especially now at the at at a point at a pretty critical point in in each development and um the the kind of the overall market picture you know you could really be seeing some substantial gains from ethereum from um these nfts not just on the the nfts themselves but just on the pure price appreciation of ETH. Yeah, I was reading a report over the weekend uh, making a case and it was actually from uh, quite a institutional type of old style bank in uh, the UK, I think. I can't remember the name of the bank looking at um, Ethereum trading at 35K. Now, the only reservation I would have about that because there's this emerging and sort of nascent, nascent ecosystem emerging, you have a lot of cost underlying costs based at the current underlying ETH price about 3600 US. Mm. And if that starts to, you know, really rip to the upside on the underlying, then this whole space is going to get there's going to be a lot of squeeze. Yeah, it, the air is going to get sucked right out of it. The air is going to get sucked right out, right? Yeah. So then your minting fees are going to well, yeah, fine point 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 one ETH today yeah great give me give me a hundred of them but like you know 0.1 eth trading at 50k uh ethereum well then the air is going to get sucked out and so actually you're going to be left at a point where a lot of the value that's now being created actually has a much higher per a value perception right because you know well now it's going to cost you 0.1 eth at, at 50k an eth yeah. Um, to do to do this so that there, therefore it cuts that innovation from underneath it and then you only really have the the dedicated players if you like left still minting stuff at you know yeah. uh, five grand <clears throat> you know yeah absolutely and you know and i think in that environment the question then becomes do these projects adapt you know do they drop their prices to something that's more palatable for these minting you know for this for this minting you know, how, how do they deal with that? Because, you know, these, these guys, from a technical standpoint, they're on a knife's edge, you know, moving and innovating and changing and funding their projects through these mints. So that is, that is a risk. And I think it's a, um, uh, as if, ETH, if, the, if the price of ETH skyrockets or moves really quickly in the short term, yeah. Um, I do think we're going to get the air sucked out of a lot of these things. Once ETH stabilizes, however, um, I I think this and again the second layer or the smaller um, altcoins will then have their time and you know time to shine. Right. So so now if we're looking at you know the next quarter or whatnot, could potentially be a relatively good time to position in solid projects in anticipation of once that cools off and people say, now I've made a ton of money just on ETH, let me buy up the floor, or buy up a bunch of these NFTs that I think are useful, which then gives further price appreciation to the NFT. So it's a very cyclical thing and we don't know what's going to happen in yeah. three months, four months. But you know, I think it's, it's one of those things anyone who's who trades with you knows is like don't try to predict what the market is going to give you trade what you've got yeah. and right now i think it's a really good opportunity for some short to medium term consist considerable gain yeah that's pretty pretty awesome uh, yeah it's it's amazing you've definitely opened my eyes up to uh, a few things here you know uh today um i think there's going to be a couple of people out there who are kind of this is they're going to need some time for this to set in uh, <laughs> yeah. people who 
are not even holding some crypto um but uh, you know it's nonetheless an extremely interesting topic and uh, i want to thank you so much for your time uh, that you've pleasure. given up this morning i know you have a hard stop coming up now um mm -hmm. you've got nfp later on today so really quiet morning and, and thanks a million for for getting this uh over the line for us uh, if anyone's interested in joining uh myself and alum and the rest of the pro trader team the elite team and the trader team uh we're here on discord live every day streaming charts looking at uh, crypto looking at the main futures market looking at some uh equities as well and uh it'd be great to have you and um yeah you can talk to to myself or alum or any of the team uh, each day we're here so just go to dugancapital.com and then you can access into the discord via there um brilliant uh yeah all right we'll be talking to you later thanks a million adam cool Cheers, oh, guys. My pleasure. bye 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 everybody